YouTubers. Rob here. Um, the crew upstairs, I want to show you how to uh, basically avoid having to replace your rubbers all the time on these king cakes. I've just done a video on this general concept, but I thought some people don't really believe it until they see it and they need more guidance on how to do it. So, um, first of all, the Schrader valve. Um, quite cheap on eBay for that, and this little pen that measures the pressure. Um, you're talking about £7.50, so it's not expensive. If you don't want to go to the effort of doing this, you can buy one from Ballyhoo. Ballyhoo make make it and so we'll sell it to you. Um, and that's the way to that's the way to go if you're if you're you know looking for a fresh one. I didn't realise Ballyhoo existed when um, I bought my king cake, so I've had to make me out. Um, quite straightforward. You used a six to an eight uh, six mil to begin with for a pilot hole using a wood drill bit, and then you go to an eight uh, mil wood drill bit and put the valve through. You can see it comes with the valve there, the rubber, and then this side has a little kind of raised bit and a screw there. All of those bits come with the Schrader valve on eBay if you find the right one. And they should be fairly standardised. Um, today we're going to talk about, obviously, the first one is that this rubber is going to go, it's either going to slip off or it's just going to get weak and it means that gas is going to come out and it's then going to go, it's going to come out of here into the keg and then once you take off the uh, pressure, lift it up, it's all going to fire back out of here again because the air, or the, the carbon dioxide that's gone into here will just return via the little hole. So to do that, you just put a cable tie just at the bottom there, near the near the nipple, uh, top of the nipple here, let the, let, leave the, the hole above it free and let the rubber just flap it open and then close on its, on its own accord. What I want to show you today though is this bit, this one here. So, this is inside one of these new S30s. This is the type that's got the, uh, the little puncture for the 8 gram. I use the 8 gram bit of bulbs. You can take that out um, and use the bigger ones as well if you wish. The, the proper refill kind of canisters. Lift this up, very simple device. That just comes off, that comes off. This isn't a rubber. <laughs> this is my fix. I'm going to show you how to do, redo this fix. There we go. So, drop the fix. I'm going to run it over the chair leg. Brilliant. Let's just dry this. to come out the factory is to have a, a brown rubber here and that brown rubber should be rated to about 10 psi but because it's been on here since the factory made it and you might buy it that a year after it was manufactured chances are that's not going to hold 10 psi anymore and over time it will degrade to the point where you should replace these every um i can't remember how often it is now every i think four to six months okay the whole valve comes out relatively simply Around it does. Drop it out. That's the valve um, with the cable tie on it. Okay. Let's see what this side on view there. Okay. Around the bottom, you still see you've got this purple rubber on, and then there's the hole just underneath that purple rubber on the left hand side, just underneath my thumb. Okay, so that's what you want to do, you want to put a table, cable tie around there, potentially. That's what I do, it works well for me. Okay, the next bit is this brown rubber. Do you replace this every four to six months? Well, you can just get around this completely by bypassing it, essentially taking it out of use. Um, and to do that, you get some insulating tape. You pull out a reasonable amount, maybe 25 to 30 centimetres. Okay. Don't worry about it losing its stickiness, you don't need its stickiness. You're going to actually take the sticky side and fold it in half. Okay, I'm just it's a bit awkward. Should have done this earlier. Well, I did. But let me know you do it like that. Use your lips, very technical. Very technical. That makes it half the size and non sticky. Got a little bit of stretch in it, and you're just going to start to 
thread it round here, underneath this bottom uh, thread on the screw. Okay, it doesn't overly matter. In fact, yeah, it's, it's also got to be above that that bottom uh, nut as well because that needs to fit back through the hole. Now, saying that, it doesn't ever fit back through the hole, so you've got to put it back through the hole. So, step one. Well, remember now, <laughs> put it back through the hole and just put your thumb on the back to hold it in place. It does get such fiddliness, but you then take the side that's. Uh, side, you know, the side that's just been halved, and come at it underneath that bottom row. Just work it round until it's past it once, okay, and just keep going round, keeping it underneath that bottom lip. There's quite a bit of spare room, you'll find later, I'll show you. So it doesn't matter if this gets really thick and bulbous. Um, you don't know you're going to have to be that accurate with it, to be honest. But, you're going to do a job, you might as well do it neatly. Sorry, just feel free to fast forward this bit, I've got no um, functionality to edit, so I'll do this in real time. Round we go, that's probably quite excessive now. <laughs> Doesn't matter, does it? Keep going, round we go, round we go. Until the end. Okay. And there we have it. All underneath that bottom thread. Because the screw still needs to go over that. This bit goes over there, as like so. Just force it down onto it. Size. Wrap it, wrap it a couple of times. Again, move the teeth. Pop it round. Once it's on there, it's not going to unwrap. Slots over and holds it in place. As so. Okay. There's the hole. Make sure the hole is like somewhere you can see it. So we're not facing the other valve. Point it out this way. If you get a little bit of this tape sticking out from underneath, it's not it's really not the end of the world. Um, it'll still produce a seal. Just tighten it. Don't have to go mad. All this tightening is doing is making this internal o ring tighter. Um, but it doesn't, it, you don't have to go mad for it. Just turn it reasonably, and that's that. You screw that on, and that really isn't going to release any pressure now. Bearing in mind now, you don't have a pressure release. The only pressure release you've got is to press this Schrader down. So just be careful. Um, if you're going to prime your beer and then put gas canisters in to top it up, just let it out, get it down to about 8 psi or something. Overnight, obviously, next couple of days it's going to carbonate more, the beer is going to produce a secondary fermentation, the yeast is going to create more carbon dioxide. You don't want this to go really past 10 or 11 psi, certainly nowhere near the 14 mark plus, keep it well away from that, it will explode, it will kill people, um, you know, you will be liable. So there's my warning, if you are going to bypass this release valve here, it saves you buying more rubbers in the future, you're going to need a, uh, a Schrader though, and you do want to keep an eye regularly on a daily basis, while it's in its secondary fermentation, you know, first three or four days, keep checking that. Make sure it's below 10 psi. Serving pressure ideally is around 6 to 7 psi, I believe.